Hello and welcome to Gearock Farms. In today's video, we're gonna be making a salt feeder for the heifer side of our dry cow and heifer barn, the pen that has the bull in it. We're gonna be making a salt feeder for that because as of right now, it, we just put it in the manger. Yeah, and it doesn't, and sometimes it gets mixed with the feed and could end up getting wasted, but. We're gonna try using this tire. This is the, the front tire from the 7405, and it's a 10 ply, it's really thick. So my theory is, is that when you're cleaning the pens and with the skid steer, you know, if you bump it, it's going to give, it's going to be forgiving. Yep. And the salt shouldn't, it the mineral eat away at rubber. It shouldn't eat it up. And it would be nice for the cattle too, not to get. Uh, Otherwise, anything steel, we got the steel trough in the back, but you can tell it after four or five years, they're already. So we're kind of stewing on how we're going to do this. We've been brainstorming for the past half an hour here. <laughs> but with the price of mineral and, and other inputs, we might as well have something simple like this. We need like something this better. To... We need something that's away from the bunk. Just, they don't need to get to it once a day and maybe not even that, just so they have it. And then so that it's out of the rain. So, okay, just some old water pipe stuff that was taken out of the barn. We're talking about maybe using that as a spacer. We got these blocks in there now, but I think we can even get it a little wider so they, and then we, uh, we're gonna cut a barrel apart to put an insert in the back of it. Maybe just, put it in there with carriage bolts or something. Just a nice backboard so the... So the salt or mineral doesn't just come licking out onto our fence or gate or get down, stuck down behind. So it stays in the feeder. And keeps it drier. Okay, so we could even go a step further and put even a... We could cut open another piece of tire and add on like a little bit of a... Like an overhang. <laughs> it could even be underneath in here. But anyway, we, we can add that. As soon as you get water and mineral, it just turns to like concrete. Well, that's the plan for this video. We're filming this here at the end of March, so we can't really get out in the fields or the pasture quite yet, so we're we're staying busy with smaller projects like this. Gotta get done, so. I hope you guys enjoy, and we'll start uh, putting this feeder together. Okay, we traced out uh, the backboard and now dad's gonna cut it out with the saw. Now there's one extra wheel in the world getting used instead of a door. <laughs> yeah, what's your input on the wheels and doors thing? Is there more wheels or is there more doors? Oh, more wheels. Honestly, yeah. But well, like this I, is still a wheel. It can still roll. It's just not going to roll anymore. It's not really being used as a wheel anymore. It's a yeah, trough. But it's a wheel. Are you guys trying to confuse life even more than it already is? Oh, wheel. No, we're just trying to update the wheels and doors, uh, you know, dilemma. Or, this is another good one I heard. Did the color orange first come, or did the orange come first? What, what, and then made the color orange, you know what I'm saying? Was the color orange a thing, and then they found oranges, so, so then they... Might as well they, ask Adam and Eve. They found that I think the color came first because the orange was here before anybody called it orange. Okay. But hey, we saw one. So they, made, so they got the color orange from the, the orange? Or they had the color orange and then they found the orange and named the orange You're gonna orange. have to ask him, whoever he is. <laughs> well, let, let us know your opinion. It's like asking if the <laughs> came first, the chicken or the egg. Well, exactly. one of them came. It takes two to make a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> really 
It's oh. like, it, it'd be a better question is like, did a chicken come first or did two eggs come first or two chickens come first? It's not just one. Can't really do much with one. We just drill right through that bead, or should we be back here? Well, uh, does the plastic go all the way in there? You probably gotta be in the bead. Yeah. Yeah. Sponsored by what? Titan or Titan's gonna sponsor this one? All right, that's our Titan feeder. Plastic should be got a big enough hole in now. Okay, an update midway through here. We started putting carriage bolts in this piece of plastic and now we're using um, pipe as a, as a way to keep the tire open and wider so it acts more like a trough and there's more room for the mineral. Another update, uh, we got all three of the pipes in there now. So now there's a nice wide opening and we got plenty of carriage bolts for the backboard to help hold that in. And right now, the real boss and dad are busy going over where exactly they can put it in the yard in that pen so it still looks pretty. So if you guys know how that is, you know. If you know, you know. Anyways, pretty soon here we'll be uh, trying to dream up a way of how to mount it in the, the bullpen. All right, they got a rough spot picked out. So we're gonna use a skid steer and get that tire up there in the pen. We would just roll it up there if it was a lot drier, but since we gotta handle it to try to mount it up on something, we don't want it completely covered in mud and, and uh, cow, uh, cow poop. So we're gonna use the skid steer to get it up and over there. I think we're having some great family bonding time. I think so. Yeah. Somebody can go pick up a block of salt. So we just let the bull back. We had them uh, gated back when we were working on that salt feeder. 
and uh, I think we may have mentioned it in prior videos where uh, we're probably gonna get rid of him here this spring because he's getting pretty uh, hard to work with. You kind of gotta watch he's yourself. He's getting big, and to breed a, a heifer that's of age, he's you know he's gonna be the point where he's gonna break her down. He's actually in pretty good shape. This bull gets around him, so he gets it done. And his daughters, I just looked in the record. It could be a few months before his daughters would be of age. So, but next year, oh yeah, we gotta cycle, get a bull before be. before midsummer. Definitely, I gotta change him out. And that that's the thing when the, when everything else goes to pasture, I mean he needs to go. And I mean then we'll have more room here. So we're looking for breeding bulls. I mean there's not a lot of places left to choose from, you know, to try to get some different blood. So if anybody out there knows, you know, where you can get like, you know. Holstein bulls with some decent genetics behind them. I mean, yeah, I don't think there's a lot of people that raise um, Holstein bulls anymore. I think when there were a lot of dairies, there was guys here and there that would raise up a handful of them at a time and then sell them to other local guys. So yeah, like my dad was saying, if you guys know of a, a guy in your area, somewhere in or somebody that's close to West Central Wisconsin, that we could probably, get, you know, maybe maybe an option to do. I mean, years ago. I know a lot of guys that used to raise bulls and they'd have, you know, they'd have them split into pens of like six or seven or whatever, keep them with size. But they always claimed that they would fight and you'd always end up with one, maybe a little lame or banged up a little bit. Well, no one's gonna wanna buy a breeding bull and pay a premium, you know, it's basically a meat price then. Yep. So they end up losing that, but, so there's less of that. No, yeah, I, I give them credit. I, I can't imagine it's probably a pain to... They grow yeah. faster. There's money in it. If So if you got all the money invested into the genetics anyway, um, if you got... But you need the facilities to separate them and then, of course, may, just be able to manage them. I think it's it can pay back. And then specifics, like, I don't think Dad's looking for necessarily a registered bull with all this paperwork. Not necessarily, but I mean, you, you know, you, you want to know that it... I mean, it it's always helps if they still got the... The mother of the bull, you know, yeah, so that you would got be, something to look at. That would at. probably be ideal if it was from a dairy herd where they raised bulls on the side and you could see what Or you the see the eat. rest of the herd, kind of where their, where their stature is. Like, we never really were crazy about something that would make real tall cows, you know. More medium to down to earth type cows, so we're not really huge on milk production stuff and all those numbers, but you just want something that looks, you know, that's going to make a decent heifer. So if you guys know, let us know in the comments. Let's go uh, look at that salt eater we just made and trying it out. Yeah, he's already kind of treating it like a toy, so. And that's why we, <laughs> that's why I was very firm about bolting this thing down good. But the best part is, is uh, whatever's bumping or scraping up against it, it's not gonna end up being a, I mean, but that's the thing with bulls like this. They like to really throw their weight around, literally. So if your doors and gates and everything aren't latched, whether they're open or shut, they, everything's got to be tied down. Or you... Yeah, like, uh, for example, that sliding door there, if, if the gate on the inside isn't closed, they'll get pretty mean with it. Just so. since, since like, midsummer, he started doing that to where if you didn't tie it, he, he was going to rip it right off. And it's more, like you said, just playing with it. He just, you know, being boss about things. Heifers and steers are kind of a different mentality. They'll, they'll mess with stuff, but not, not as nasty as something like this. I know talking to guys that did dairy and then they switched over to more of a feedlot with just steers. They say steers are very docile, though. Oh, yeah. but, they're, but they're also animals that are, are bored, so they, they, well, might, see cause, what they, they do. might cause some trouble. So, like, we got guys that live near us that raise, raise uh, Holstein steers their whole life. And... They were very firm about how they had their gates tied and how they maneuvered their cattle. But like here, for instance, if, if there was a chain or something that moved, they would lick and play with it constantly. And whether one was done, the other one was playing with it. And he said they got some gate open. He said they <laughs> he was so surprised they got it open. I've heard uh, like feeder pigs are the, are the same way because they don't have anything else on their mind. I think that's what it is, exactly. And, and the bull, if he's got, like when he was maybe like last summer or last spring, he was he was only about the size of a good dairy cow then. And if he had breeding to do, you know, like one or two a week, he was just kind of like, okay, I'm tired now. I'm going to go. He yeah, was mellow. He, he was wasn't, mellowed out. 
you know this but that's that's hormones he's doing only what he's supposed to do and you just have to respect that you know you want him to do it he's getting he's getting done what we we bought him to do but he's just big and pretty soon his daughters will be of age so he's you know we can't have that so um, time to go back to the salt feeder that worked out pretty nice it uh, got a little complicated midway through the project everybody had their ideas but uh, well that's the thing it's, it's and that's all good but eventually you just gotta you know you gotta kind of i think we're gonna build another one for the other side because we got more of these this material lying around basically uh byproducts of stuff or you know them barrels these wore down tires and it'll be interesting to see how dry it stays you know because the top yeah. of the tire acts as a roof and yeah and, we did uh, push the top out further than the bottom so we could add some sort of little shield but i do think if we try to put something on there they're gonna really mess with that yeah. even more you know so if it works good here we'll put one on the other side and then we got the for the dairy cows over there i mean we could yeah it's just bolts it's simple hardware and they and it's gonna go faster because yeah. now we got a, something to follow we yeah. realize how it works and and it's it's nice and slim up against the gate so with the skid steer it shouldn't be an issue and even if you do bump it it's rubber and yeah that's what i like and then especially like when he's trying to breed something they scrape up against it well if you have something made of iron there's no give and and then that stuff too the salt really raises havoc with those type of things yeah, so you can't beat it you know that's you, it's farmer what innovation yeah farmer innovation or something like that i guess you could say but anyways also let us know in the comments what you think of our salt feeder let us know uh, what type of uh, salt feeders you guys have on on your farm or mineral feeders you'd be interested to hear about them or uh, you could send us pictures on our social media pages we'd like to see them and uh if you want to see more of us you can you can find it there as well um, we also got a p.o box wanted to mention that here at the end of the video and uh any last comments from dad it's been a good day we got some projects out of the way and it's nice to work with you boys you know and i think you guys are learning a lot i, I realize you're you're starting to appreciate more that because someday I won't be here or I'll be off doing something else and maybe you'll be running this place and you got, you know, that way you got your experience. You know, well, that's where you learn it. Enough of that sentimental stuff. <laughs> anyway, anyways. Well, we got to do it when we're here. Yeah. Anyways, thank you all for watching and uh, make sure to check out our other videos.